It is my great pleasure to welcome our distinguished guests uh, tonight, uh, the screenwriters of this uh, intense film we just saw, this, I don't know, beautifully terrifying, terrifyingly beautiful film. Uh, I'm still sort of recovering from that. Yeah. Um, Jake Koskop, immediately to my left here, has been a screenwriter in Los Angeles for 15 years. Uh, his most recent film is Marshall, uh, starring Chadwick Boseman and Josh Gad. It tells the story of a significant court case uh, in the early career of Thurgood Marshall. Um, I just found out today that he <laughs> wrote it with his father, which I think is an amazing thing. Um, it just came out this fall, and it's getting fantastic reviews, so uh, you should check that out. Um, further to my left, uh, an actor, writer, and director, Todd Luizzo, has appeared uh, in a number of films and television shows, uh, and has directed three feature-length films, yeah. uh, including Hello, I Must Be Going, uh, which was named one of the top 10 independent films of 2012 by the National Board of Review, <coughs> and Love, Liza, which was a Sundance Grand Jury nominee. He also directed the 15-minute Hamlet, uh, which won Best Shorts at the New York Comedy Film Festival. And Jake and Todd collaborated uh, on the Mark Pease experience, uh, starring Jason Schwartzman, Ben Stiller, and Anna Kendrick. Uh, the film was written by the two of them and then directed by Todd. Yeah. We are delighted to have them. Uh, please, could you join me in welcoming Todd Luizzo and Jake Koskoff? Yeah. Now, so just to get us started, what drew you um, to this material, to take this on, Shakespeare and Macbeth, at the beginning uh, of this process? Um, Todd, <laughs> do you remember? I do remember. It was a long uh, time ago. Yeah, I did a lot of theater growing up. Uh, and a lot of Shakespeare growing up, and I was in a production of McBee when I was probably 10 years old, or I played young Macduff, and it just always sort of stuck in my, uh, you know, just stuck in my head, and, um, um, and I, had, I was uh, good friends with Phil Hoffman, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and did my first feature with him. He was in my short, The 15-Minute Hamlet, and um, then, he was looking for, he hadn't played any really leading roles before, and so he had the screenplay that his brother had written, and I wanted to direct a feature, and he wanted to star in a film, and so we decided to do that together. It took us a long time to get the funding, but we, we eventually did, and so we did that. It was called Love, Liza, and that was in, we shot in 2000, and it was released beginning of 2000. We shot in 2000, sorry. It was released in it was 2002. 2002. We shot it, yeah. yeah, we shot in 2001. It was released in 2002. Um, and after that, I was like, uh, I wanted to work with Phil again. and Wanted to work with Jake again. I did want to work with Jake again. <laughs> yeah. Jake uh, helped out a lot with Love, Liza, with the script. And, um, I didn't write Love, Liza, like I said, Phil's brother did. But Jake and my wife, who's also a writer, both helped with that um, on the sly. Uh, and uh, I wanted to work with Phil, and I thought, um, I just, I don't know why I thought of Macbeth. Well, we, there, we discussed it, and there hadn't been a Macbeth right. film adaptation in a while. Um, in our mind, there hadn't been a definitive Macbeth made, and um, it surprised us because it's, in our opinion, the most cinematic of the Shakespeare plays, and it's the shortest, yeah, it's, it's very visual, and to us it just felt like a natural time to, to make, to make yeah. it. Yeah, and he, to me, was like the, you know, perfect Macbeth, just... Philip. Phil was, yeah, yeah Phil. I, I just thought, you know, what a, just he would be amazing at it, and he wanted to do it, and, but we couldn't raise money for it. And uh, we tried for a long time to raise money for it, and we couldn't. And then uh, he did Capote and won an Oscar for that and started getting all these offers for you know big paying movies. And I was like, let's do Macbeth. And he was like, I need to make all this money. And uh, he was like, we can do you know, Macbeth later, you know, because he was young at the time. Uh, so I was very bummed out but uh, was like, all right, and put it in a drawer. 
And uh, what was it like five or six years later, one of the people who had been sort of an assistant in the one of the production companies that was involved in our original efforts to make the movie came back to us and said, uh, "Is that still available? I'd like to option it." Um, they came to you. They yeah, came to us. Yeah, he, he was an assist. We had gone. We had gone as far as going to England and Scotland to do location scouting, and and he. Uh, Ian Canning is his name. He was an assistant in like the office that was going to fund us, a company called Renaissance. And he had read the script while he was copying it. <laughs> oh, right. And he loved, it. when he called me like six years ago or five years ago, he was like, I'll just never forget that script. It was an amazing adaptation. I'll never forget it. Is it still available? And he said, I'm starting to produce movies again. And not again. I've started to produce movies. I have a movie coming out this fall. It's going to be at Telluride. But I'd love to option this. Uh, I'd like to get someone else to direct it, if that's OK with you. And I hadn't even thought about it. And I was like, yes, great, whatever. But it turned out the movie that he had produced was The King's Speech. <laughs> so it was like, oh. A couple of months later, he was up there accepting the Academy Award for Best Picture. And we were like, okay, well, let's, let's do Macbeth now. Yeah. We signed, we signed with that guy. That's yeah. good. Um, and that's how it sort of all came together with getting up to, when they shot 20 in 2014. Okay. And at what point did we get these actors on board? Do we get the director, Justin Krizel, on board? At what point did all that come into um, sort of um, focus? I think Ian Canning, the producer, uh, had talked to Michael about doing it. Um, and he came on pretty soon. Yeah, he was into it. And then, you know, they, they came up with a list of directors to talk to about it. And uh, Justin, he had had, I think, just one film. Um, uh, that he made in Australia, and they felt like a good match, and he and uh, Michael Fassbender got on really well, so he signed on, and, and then it was kind of a, an arranged marriage. <laughs> and uh, the uh, producer, Ian, decided that we, we needed to get together for an intensive session, so he flew Justin from, uh, I think it was in London to LA, for three days just to sit with us and go through the script. And that was n the, the most uh, productive time in the evolution and development of this screenplay. Yeah, what was that process like? That sounds very intense. Yeah, because uh, yeah, we hadn't worked on it since, since then, since we had put it away. Um, um, yeah, we just started going through it scene by scene, really examining it, coming up with you know, a lot of questions. You know, and, and we had, you know, we would, we would focus on one issue at a time. I remember like, you know, we were looking at, you know, how does Burnham Woods come to Dunsinane? <laughs> Can I just say that's one of my favorite, favorite yeah. sort of, you know, it's a problem to solve. With it's a problem to solve and, and it's a brilliant was. solution. <laughs> you don't, you know, because you picture the play and there's like a bunch of actors holding, you know, pretend sticks right. walking towards the castle. Um, and here's an opportunity to do something grand. And we, you know, I remember me and Justin sitting there just kind of with no ideas and Todd kind of standing looking really spaced out and he was like, uh, maybe they burn the woods and the ash and smoke comes to the <laughs> I had to say that. And that, we were, that we were both like, like, yeah. That feels like a very California solution for right. <laughs> all these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that true. one place comes to another via ash. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I um, remember thinking like it, it, it's such a, because it's been done so many times, how do you do it that's different? How, what's like some, and that's what was really the most fun about doing the adaptation, the f you know, first draft we did and all the way through was, you know, coming up with different you know, interpretations of the, of the play, of the dialogue. Um, you know, and every scene, every line almost requires a, de a decision yes. um, because there are different ways to play it, there are different meanings it might have, and you have to really kind of sit down and say, all right, what is he doing here? And, and we also didn't want to mess with like the, you know, Shakespeare gods in any way, because we were, <laughs> when we first started working on it, you know, we would check in with a, a professor, right? At, oh, it's yeah, always at, good to do. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> because we, we didn't want to like, you know, I mean, I know the play and I know a lot of different plays, but I also wanted to, we wanted to make sure we weren't 
you know, completely going to offend uh, the academic world, and we weren't going to, you know, uh, so we, we did a lot of our homework that way with what we could cut, with what we couldn't cut. Um, and you know, going back to this idea of solving problems, were there any particular obstacles in the, you know, in adapting the play to the screen as you thought it through, that you thought, how are we going to do this? You know, the Burnham Wood is, it, is right. a good one. Are there other instances of things that were, that were troubling you, or things we had moments of sort of, you know, illumination? Aha! This is this is how we'll do this. That was definitely sure. aha. The, the yeah, thing. and uh, the witches. The witches were a problem throughout because you know we we wanted to consider the the intent of of their presence and what it meant at the time the play was written. And you know they were supposed to be scary. But when we look at the, their lines, their dialogue, you know, you, all you can picture is like the cauldron <laughs> and the cackling witches. And it doesn't have that effect. So for us, it was more important to preserve the effect than to preserve their scenes and their dialogue. Yeah, I remember thinking like what, because you know, audiences aren't going to be really scared of the cackling you know, witch. So what scares me? And I, I remember Jake and I talked about the the two sisters in Don't Look Now, mm. uh, the Nicholas blind Rowe. woman yeah. and her sister, and that always freaked <laughs> me out. So I thought, you know, the more normal we can make them, you know, the better. Um, yeah. We that never quite felt like we cracked it. Like, we felt like right, we were still yeah. a couple of ideas short. I was going to ask, it's, it seems, you know, <laughs> translating from a play to a film, you would think, I think a lot of people will be tempted to go for special effects, to go for, you know, what, what can a camera do to give us these, you know, the supernatural in a kind of, you know. Right. That, right. we never you, thought you of that. Though. Clearly went the opposite <laughs> way, which works beautifully, I think, here. Um, and they're very intimate figures. When they stand, you know, uh -huh. the, when, they, when we first meet them, they're standing so close <coughs> to uh, Macbeth and Banquo, and they're sort of whispering to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are four of them. Yeah, yeah that was not three. us. That, oh, that was, was not no. you. No, we, we, we left the project with three witches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't and know where the there, fourth a one fourth came from. The fourth one arrived, he was a yeah. child. And then maybe it fixed. was just like a, a sort of obnoxious effort to make us annoyed. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I'm sure there's a reason why there's okay. a fourth. I don't know what it is. Okay. But it adds to the kind of eerie effect to have them sort of be multi-generational in there. Yeah, yeah, no, we, like, yeah. we definitely like that. We that had a child, we had the three different ages. And, and we had one of the witches was pregnant when we... Oh, yeah. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. and then so there's the baby that is there in yeah. this at the end. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking, watching it, like, when Fleance escapes from the murderers in the forest and he comes across the witch, I was like, God, that was in our original draft... Is that right? 16 years ago. Right, yeah. And it just stayed as... Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a minute ago that there, are these, there have been many film adaptations of Macbeth, uh, although you thought not a definitive one. Uh, as you were sort of writing it, did you seek them out so that you would do something different? Did you uh, want to avoid them so that you wouldn't be influenced by them? How did you relate to f earlier film adaptations, or did you stay away? I stayed away. Did, we, <laughs> did you watch them? I watched the you know, Polanski one, mm -hmm. and, and which I just, I, I never, it never got me. I, you know, I've seen the Olivier one, I, and the one, the one that I loved the most just was not going to have an uh, effect on me, which was the uh, BBC one with Judy Dench. Oh, yes. That you know, that, I mean, that's amazing, but it's you know, all done on a right. stage. On stage. Yeah. And Throne of Blood, which, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you don't have the dialogue. You don't have the language. Yeah, it, it seems easy to sort of not be, uh, not worry about the influence there since it's such a right. different yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to be influenced then. I didn't want to be intimidated. Now, so uh, some of these questions I'm going to ask you then, I'm not, I'm not sure if, you know, if I'm sure. asking this of your original screenplay or what, what appears on the, on, in the yeah. final production. But, uh, you know, Shakespeare's play begins with the witches on the heath. It begins, you know, with this very supernatural moment. Whereas here, uh, we begin with a dead child. We, we begin with, you know, grief. Right. Right. You know, with these parents in mourning. Um, it was this part of your original vision, and if so, why did you want to begin the story there? Yeah, I don't think we, it's funny, I kind of don't remember, because we, <laughs> we uh, pitched the idea to them of the fact that they've lost a child, right. and that that's a, a thread throughout um, that ex, you know, explains a lot, motivates a lot of their action and grief um, and insanity. I don't think we had it at the very beginning. 
I don't think we did. Um, I think we kind of saved the reveals. So we talked about them having a ch child and having the child appear uh, in the uh, uh, hand oh, washing scene. Spot scene. Yeah. 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 I don't know what happened to out Dan Spot. The, yeah. the spot was the, the yeah the spots on his face, but then they ne she never says it. It's it's almost as if you were we're, meant, we're waiting to hear it and then we yeah. see it visually. Is that yeah? yeah. That's I forgot. Yeah, we I just remembered. We that. kept yeah. that in there. I yeah. remember that we had. She goes back to Inverness and she hears a child crying, and she's making her way through the her old castle and finds the child. I think Jake came up with that. That she that we see the child. You know, is riddled with spots. And that was a different, we were like, what can we do differently without them spot? Right. You and know, and so it's tricky when you're trying to do something differently because it's very conspicuous and it has to resonate um, immediately. You know, you have to think that makes total sense, mm -hmm. that that's the spot she's referring to, that she's not trying to rub out the spot on her hand. You know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of pressure. But yeah, um, if, if, I mean, it feels like it, it would have felt like the most one of the more daring things to have done with this play to take this iconic speech right, and right. give it a very different valence. And right. I really, you know, appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, the film and I assume then this the, the original screenplay you wrote uh, really does take a lot of risks uh, with this material, which, yeah. is, which is fantastic. And I mean, that was the fun, the really fun part was kind of taking dialogue and, and putting it in a different scene. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> we have that scene after the murder of Duncan with uh, Macbeth and Malcolm, where he's telling him, I, basically, I just killed your father. He's, he's dead. These daggers are the, you know, that, that speech comes later, mm -hmm. um, comes, and it, does, it isn't delivered to Malcolm. And it's not a threat. In the and way it's not a threat. It, in fact, he's play acting, saying, you know, I don't, I came in, he was dead, and I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Right. So and th those know. kind of things were really kind of the, the most exciting yeah. Yeah, so and I don't know if that actually even comes across because I remember when, when we did that, Jake, you kind of came up with that idea where he's actually that's the beginning of his hallucination, and that he's halluc he feels Macbeth feels like he's hallucinating Malcolm, mm. like so he's having this speech, and that's why he lets him go. And I don't know if that comes across when I was watching it. And well, I was he, like, I don't know if that comes. He does across. say, are, "Are you real?" Yeah, he does. Yeah, but I, really I wasn't sure. Did There's it come across? <laughs> We no. did see okay. him in a, someone says no, in yeah. a fugue state uh, from the murder on, yeah. you know, for the... For the yeah, um, that's when it kind so of starts. Certainly see he's acting unhinged, to be sure. Right. So, speaking of the murder of Duncan, obviously this is the crucial moment uh, in the play, the crucial act. In the play, we do not see uh, the murder of Duncan, but here we, yeah. we, we see quite certainly, a bit. Yeah, we certainly do. Um, you know, is that part of the original vision? Is yeah. there a reason you wanted to, to give us that very, I don't know, visceral, grisly scene? Well, because, yeah, because those were the things of like what Jake was originally saying about the play, you know, how how cinematic it is and how it has, you know, you know, sex and murder and violence and all these, you know, things of modern cinema. <laughs> and so let's, yeah, let's why, go for not, it. Yeah, we didn't want to shy away. And also, you know, if you're really presenting the figure of a of a brutal tyrant. Um, to shy away from it, it feels it, it feels in, insincere, right. um, and you know that's why we have also it, we have Macbeth killing the Macduff uh, family, you know the burning at the stake. I think we in our version originally we had him stabbing them right. one at a time. Oh, um, interesting. And in our minds, that's the moment that pushes Lady Macbeth over the edge. From that point on, she's. Out. Out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of see that from her when she's when She's kneeling. watching that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's just a very striking scene uh, when we actually have the, 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 the burning uh, of uh, yeah. Lady Macduff and her yeah. children. I mean, it seems like there's a, a way in which uh, Macbeth's madness, the fact that he has become this tyrant sort of comes into focus there. D you know, in your screenplay, you did, it was a private moment where he, c he does not kill them in public in this way, I take it, it sounds like. No, he oh, did. He, oh, he did. Yeah. Okay, so that was part of your yeah, vision. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what, what, why did you want to, um, I don't know, make his tyranny so present? It makes it a very different film. It sort of politicizes exactly. some of what he's doing more. Well, it makes, it makes you think of, of, of our current <laughs> world. Yes. And, you know, I remember when it came out, it was, you know, Assad was, you know, the one that you would think of, and um, yeah, I, I don't 
think at that point sympathizing with Macbeth is something that is appropriate. <laughs> um, and so, you know, why not show what a tyrant is? Absolutely. Yeah, more than I think um, any other version of this play that I've seen on film or on stage, uh, this version seems to me to be about you know trauma, you know the, the trauma yeah. of loss, you know grief, the trauma of war, yeah. Um, yeah, the trauma of you know living under a tyrant. Was that part of the vision from the beginning to sort of really explore that? It, Justin really brought in the idea of wanting to explore PTSD. Mm. Um, Jake and I were more. I wasn't so much into the trauma when we did the adaptation. The problem with it is that, it, with this angle of, of Macbeth suffering from PTSD, mm -hmm. you know, with all his, his war trauma, um, the problem is he starts off and he's already gone. Right. Like, and so it doesn't give you a chance to really connect with him and then feel for him as he descends into madness. Um, it's a choice that Justin made, and um, it works, I think, but it's a different movie than what we were imagining. This that. is one of the differences you had. Yeah. And to mm -hmm. you, what you, it sounds like what you lose then is the kind of fall of Macbeth. Right. Yeah. If, he's, if he's already gone, if he's already yeah, that's sort of hardened to, the, to these And to the these real apprehension, you know, that's some of those most painful scenes early on are when he's trying to decide, you know, what to do. Right. Yeah, um, and to me, it's like he he's already there. Yeah, he's already the kind of crazy, and instead of yeah, starting off in this vulnerable place. Right, like the vulnerability. Like Jake and I saw it more, and also you know, including Phil in that conversation, Phil Hoffman is that there's a with Phil there's like a vulnerability and a and a, this feminine side to him that I think. Justin and Michael just went in a different direction. But what was interesting to Jake and me was exploring that masculine feminine side to Macbeth and how they, you know, it's always brought up like, are you a man? Right. Uh, and uh, especially after he becomes king, you sure. know, and he's now in these robes and he's clean and he's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to explore that. Um, you know, and it's just, you know, there are also all these, there are all these challenges, and I think there's probably challenges in, in producing the, the play, too, of, you know, I was just thinking of the moment where Duncan names Malcolm Prince of Cumberland. Yes. And to an audience, I don't, I mean, for me, that never meant anything, because of, he's his son, so in our minds, he would be the next in line for the throne. But... For them, in, the, in that time, he, wasn't, he wouldn't have naturally been the heir to the throne. So with the moment he names him prince, Macbeth, that's a dramatic moment for, of transition for Macbeth because he now realizes his path to the throne is being blocked. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, again, you know, it's so hard to show that right. in any way to an audience that would expect that, of course, Malcolm's his son, he will be the next in line. Yeah. So th I, this may get into um, you know, areas where you, you know, uh, have differences with, 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 Kurt's, with Kurtzell's version. Um, the, the film has been critiqued in certain corners for sort of stylized violence, uh, mm -hmm. which is certainly central to the experience of the film. Uh, at the same time, there, you know, in its handling of the material, one could see a kind of anti-war message in it. I'm mm -hmm. thinking especially of the moment yeah. when um, we get that initial battle, and we see all those, you know, you know, sort of achingly young yeah, men those faces going into war. Yeah, those children. Amazing, yeah, yeah. Um, was that, you know, ha, ha, you know, in terms of your vision for the of the film, what, 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 what this kind of brutal world that we, yeah, did, what did you want the audience to feel about it? Or that how was did you want that was in our s original script. I think that's what everyone took away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they, would, when they would read it. Yeah. Um, and I think it was very effective the way he did it. I mean, it's beautiful yeah. and, and, and brutal. Um, you know, the other thing I think people have problems with that I, th I have more of an issue with is the, the monotone delivery mm. of, of so much of the lines. That, to me, is a, is a questionable choice. Um, 
I don't know, what did people think of that? <laughs> we were talking about sound uh, earlier, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and yeah. as I was, as I was um, you know, watching the film, I was thinking that, um, you know, there's so many elements out of this that I love. But there's something about this overall sound design that, as you say, feels limiting. There's a mm -hmm. hushed, muted quality to the whole yeah. thing that, yeah. that, 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 that yeah. as you say, that kind of monotone delivery is part of. Yeah, and it doesn't yeah. bring out as this well. other part of the play. That, I mean, that's the, you know, lifeblood of it, or just the, it's just, there's so many dimensions to the play and so many layers that, you know, with that choice, I feel like you're gonna lose, lose a lot, so um, the, frustrates me sometimes. Yeah, and it comes across those, there are scenes where they break out of that, and right. those are, are very effective, I think. You know, when, when Michael says, my, uh, full of scorpions yes. is my mind, I mean, that <laughs> is scene. so <laughs> frightening um, and powerful. So I wish, there was, I wish there was more of that. Yeah, and I don't know where that came from, if it was, you yeah. know, I don't know how that choice was made. Uh, to have it just everything like that and like that and like that because uh, I don't know I'm not sure. S speaking of uh, you know along these uh, along the lines of, of, of what we were saying earlier about the uh, message of the film in terms of violence and war uh, and the young men we have that one young man yeah. uh, who seems to haunt Macbeth he mm -hmm. has this bond with him he dies in that first battle right. he's the one who delivers the dagger he, right. we see him again giving the, the pro prophecies was that part of your uh, original screenplay? No. That? no, that was just, I mean, we, we worked with Justin on that okay. and, and getting that in, and we, we, we thought that was an interesting take. Um, we were worried about confusion about his son. Right. You know, is, is that his son? son? Is, right. is that another son? What is, what's going on? Why, what is that connection? So I'm not sure how it works for people, but um, I thought it was an interesting choice. In general, this fil there are so many children yeah. in the film. Yeah, um, I mean, this is obviously part of the play. Right? There, it is part of the play. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but here we get, uh, not only do we get the extra children in term with regard to the witches, mm -hmm. we get this sort of surrogate son for Macbeth that we just mm -hmm. talked about. Right. At the very end of the, of the film, um, we have, is that Fleance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who comes to the battlefield, yeah. takes Macbeth's sword, and yeah. Malcolm, who's very young, Right. Uh, sort of flees the throne, or seems to, leaves at least, the throne room. Right. Can you talk about the ending of the film? I don't know. Well, I yeah, don't know. I mean, I, I, I remember talking to, we were talking to Justin about it, and, you know, about how interesting it is that it's Banquo's, you know, we, we don't, Malcolm takes over the throne, but it's Banquo who's been prophesied right. to be the, you know, the father of, of the heir. So that means Fleance is, in some way connected to... He's the future somehow. He's, yeah, or his children or whatever. But um, so, so, we, he, so Justin then wanted to bring that back in at the very end um, to, to set up the idea that, you know, like a sequel <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> where it's Fleance and Malcolm. Uh, so I get see ready. Or, or the cyclical nature of things. Right? Yeah. Of course. This will happen again. Yeah. Yeah. Happen, yeah. Um, so you, when you first, ha you know, were envisioning this this project, you had Philip Seymour Hoffman in mind as Macbeth. Here we have Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard. Yeah. yeah. What you know, in terms of these performances, were, you know, were there things that surprised you? Of you know, the things that these actors brought out of these characters that you wouldn't have seen, or were there moments where they you realized something that you really wanted for the film? Can you say tell us what you mm -hmm. thought of these performances? Um, I, I, I thought she was amazing. I just thought she was amazing. Uh, you know, because I, <laughs> I was originally supposed to direct it, so sometimes I get like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> um, so I love Michael. Um, I, I think he's amazing. I think, I, like I was saying, I'm not sure what the choice was with going so flat with the delivery, I'm not sure. You know, the film, you know, I could not have made that film. It's, it's amazing, visually striking. It, it was incredibly difficult to make, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, as far as though the, the direction, as far as emotionally though, mm. I, I, that's where I go like, I get a little bit frustrated, just like thinking like, Oh, I would have done that, or had them do this because just of the arc yes. of things, and and uh, um, so that can get a little bit the, frustrating. I love Sean. 
Uh, I was just going to say the performance to me that stands out is Sean Harris as as Macduff because that's such a difficult part yeah, to, to make into something. Um, and also, I love David Thewlis too. Yeah, and David I Thewlis love as him. well. He's amazing. Yeah. I love him. Um, but we had some concern. I remember when they told us uh, Marion was going to do it. Um, you know, the the first question is, does, can she do the language? You know? Right. Um, and I think that was her question as well. She right. she wasn't sure. Um, but yeah, she's she's, she's amazing. amazing. Yeah, amazing. she killed it. Yeah. Um, so I guess you know this sort of opens a whole. So you were potentially going to direct it. Yeah, I was supposed um, to direct it when we. When, yeah, that was the whole idea. We're this close. That close. Wow. Well, yeah. if you could go, if you could tweak something, you, we talked already about the sort <laughs> That's of. Right. If, if you know, if there's if there's one thing or two things or three things that you could go it's, back and change. It's oh, go back. Oh, no, I mean it's it's an amazing piece. I feel like it's an amazing piece. That's the only thing that I would. Is is, is the, that is that delivery? Is yeah the. Just the more the storyline of the of the play in in a way that's emotionally connected and and just what we've been talking about about the more layers mm. of of him that we see and and the connection between them you know was something we really worked hard to maintain throughout right and a lot of that is kind of is kind of missing it got a lot thinner um, like I remember in the first scene with. Macduff and Banquo after the battle scene, they gave the monologue of Banquo's to the character with the beard. Um, but it's it's it, kind of a composite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's Banquo's speech. And we used to have... What speech? The uh, Doubtful It Stood. No, we gave that to... We took that from him and gave it to Banquo. Right, oh, right, right, right. And then they gave it back to him. Right, we gave that to Banquo as... And they... they Delivered it together, walking away from the battlefield. I see. And they were sort of. It was very playful. Yeah, it was playful as two friends, you know, and they were enjoying each other, and it wasn't so. Doubtful it stood as two oh, spent I see. swimmers. Sort of walking. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But and all is too weak for brave Macbeth, and then Macbeth is like, well, he deserves that name, you know. And it, so it sort of had this liveliness to it, and it wasn't all just, you know. And so it gave it some more shape. Yeah, um, and then they stumble across the witches, and the the mood changes instantly. Right, right. Yeah, well, it, it isn't it isn't a particularly funny play. No, but there no. is some comedy. But there's well, stuff. It's not a funny there, movie. Right. No, no. I was going to say even the, the comedy that there is is not here. Right. They, they, it's, yeah, it's, that it's clearly we been missed. removed. Yeah. Um, you know, not like the porter, who right. we took out. I mean, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. there were so many things that we took out. Were just such a relief. Like the moment I remember getting rid of Donald Bain. And we're like, why? why do we need him? Why was he there for so long? <laughs> right. <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> we just didn't have him with us. Um, when you first saw it, you know, it, it, I, you 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 put it in a drawer. It's like 2002 or something. Right. Is that right? Yeah. And then, 2004 and then or five. Maybe. Long process. It finally. Yeah. When you first saw it, what what was your reaction to it? Were there moment where there were moments where you said, "Oh, that I did that. I love that. That's something I." What, what what did you feel when you first saw it? When we first saw it, we we were, we, we were ready to hate it. Yeah. So because we were mad still. Okay. About how things yeah. went down, and we had read the the uh, a, a draft that came after, which was very frustrating, and there were things that we had to say like this doesn't make any sense logistically, you know, and try to convince them to at least address those things. Yes. Yeah, so, um, we so we went in really bitter, and and, and we were the circumstances like, whoa, hey, of it. this is great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, I was, I was relieved, you know, and I yeah. was, I was like, and then I got to, you know, think about it some more. And yeah. Looking at it. I so remember the first time I saw it, I, I actually hated it, and then the, and then the second time I saw it, I was with my wife, and I was watching her, and she was clearly loving it, and then I started to be like, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> and what about this time? <laughs> this time was kind of in the middle. In the middle, all right. No, I, uh, this time, uh, to me, the, at the beginning, I was like, oh, too much score, too much monotone. The second half, to me, was very powerful. Mm. Mm, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's an intense, intense film. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and I, you know, the, the, one of the things that I love about it is that you can tell that the, um, you know, um, changes made. Uh, to, to the play yeah. are made very um, carefully and um, conscious of what mm -hmm. that will do, and how yeah. that will ramify Thank throughout you. the play. So I think that, uh, you know, when you see lines moved from here to there, it, yeah. there's a purpose to it. Yeah, good. Works quite well. Thank you.
you know, while I, I, I do think this is a fantastic achievement, now I, I, wanna, I, I want your version. I know. <laughs> I well, can you imagine how we feel? Uh, I can. <laughs> um, would you ever return to, to, to Shakespeare to do another adaptation of Shakespeare? Yeah, I want to right role? now. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> but what play do you suggest? Oh, King Lear is my favorite. Although That's it's a hard it's, one. It is, yeah. But yeah. Actually, I, I saw like uh, um, Harold Pinter did an adaptation of King Lear, but it was like 400 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, Tim, Tim Roth me. had it. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> I went over to meet with him once, and he was like, I have this. Like, you oh meant, my God. He was, that was for this. He was yeah. attached to this. Yeah, he was oh, attached to He, right? he was going to play, gonna play uh, Macduff, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, when yeah. Phil was That would be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Can we can we thank them once again? Thank uh, you. Yes, thank thank you, you guys. So fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.